Okay, I think that we got the young adult class over here and the good looking class here. And <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started tonight. Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done, what you're already going to do, and uh, what you've uh, just wanting to show us tonight. Lord, I just pray, dear Lord, that every heart, mind, ear is open to hear your word. I lift up the young adult class there. Lord, I pray you just be with them. And uh, I just pray, dear God, you just explode that class, that it just keeps growing and reaching, reaching young adults out there, Lord, that maybe don't even go to church. They'll just start coming because they hear what's happening here at Open Arms. I pray the same thing for us here, Lord, that uh, we reach out and tell everybody what we're doing, and they see it on Facebook, and they want to be a part of this. So, God, just help us to be obedient and help us to stay focused on you and just worship you. That's what it's all about. We love you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen. How many of you had a good Valentine's, huh? I mean, it was this, I'm gonna, I, I do got to share this, I'm not going to tell you everything that happened, but I got to spend my Valentine, me and my wife, I got to spend our Valentine with the pastor and his wife, and I'm going to tell you, I had the best time, I I did. I had the best time. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. Uh, God just blessed us all for it. And, and you know, when you when you go out with a couple that you love so much, and, and they're your pastor also, and, and but you find out, you find out that things that I did in my past, and my wife did in her past, they did the same thing. I mean, it blowed us away, Pastor. And we still talk about it. Me and Mary still talk about it. We just, I mean... I thought I loved them, but I never knew how much I loved them after we after Valentine's night. I'm serious. We just and I and I do. I love you with all my heart, and and uh, we just need to we need to get closer together, one another. You know what? All of us. We need to get close. We need to, like I said not too long ago, we don't just need to do Valentine's once a month. We don't just need to love one another once a month. We need to love and have fellowship and and. Get together all the time. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, what God's laid on my heart tonight, it's, it's not really, it's about love, but yet it's not. Because we didn't talk about love so much for this month, and it's a good thing to keep doing it. But what he's really laid on my heart is less focus on eternity. Amen. Less focus on eternity. And this is what God laid on my heart to write before we get into the scriptures there are far better things ahead than any we can leave behind. Amen. I mean, what are you looking forward to when you go to heaven? What are you looking forward to, huh? I, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, can you, sometimes you can't even imagine. You can't. You sit there and think and you say, streets of gold. A mansion? How many is it? Is anybody here live in a mansion? I don't. God said he's going to give us a mansion, David. Is that something to look forward to? And I'm, I'm going to tell you what. You know, me and my son, we're builders. But I guarantee you it's not built like his. We can't build that good, can we, John Boy? We do the best we can, but the mansion we're going to get is the best mansion that's ever been built. Amen? And I just can't wait. I can't wait. Till we get there and see that mansion. You know, men, pastor, every time we preach, we talk about the rapture. We talk about the trumpet sounding. And one of these days, real soon, it's getting ready to happen. Uh, it's getting ready. Give God a, yes, it's getting ready to happen, I'm telling you. Let's go into Scripture because I'm excited because I've already been talking to some that's already been talking about this. And it's just like God put it together. For them, for me, and especially for everybody here. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. He has prepared, listen, he has prepared everything for us. He's waiting, we're, listen, we're waiting for that trumpet, aren't we? We're waiting, we're waiting to be with Jesus, aren't we, brother? We're waiting to, to, to leave his place and go be with him. Amen? And he says, when that trumpet sounds, we're going to show you in a minute, that he's prepared this place for us, and we're going to be there. Amen? 
and I'm excited about leaving this place and going. How many's tired of this world? Honestly, huh? Raise your hand if you're tired of this world. Are you tired of everything that's happening right now, huh? Every one of us is just tired. We're just tired of of listening to the the pandemic. Talk about that. Talk about uh, sex things is all messed up. I mean, it is. Everything is just messed up. God created sex for us as a husband and a wife. He did. Not man and man and woman and woman. He created it to have pleasure with one another after you're married. After you're married. Not before. After you're married. So, look, God has prepared everything for us. And we need to get ready because we're getting ready to be raptured out of here. We are getting ready. I'm telling you, and I'm going to show you even more. Look, Philippians 3, 20 through 21 says, for our conversation is in heaven. Where? Where? In heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. Oh, my goodness. Everybody look at yourself. I wish I had a mirror. Is anybody want a new body size me? Huh? I, I want a new body. I do. I, I mean, I want, it's, listen, our new bodies, everybody, is going to be perfect. It's going to be a perfect body. All of our bodies are going to be perfect. Can you imagine? Think about that just a minute. You know, we, we read the Word. We study the Word. We preach the Word. We go out and tell everybody else about the Word. But sometimes we don't sit and think enough about what it really means. A new body, David. And I, I'm going to get ahead of myself because I'm going to show you more scripture. But listen, there's no more pain in that body. You don't have to go get surgery. You don't have to go and take medicine and pills. You don't have to worry about no COVID. Amen? This body won't get it then. It's new. It's clean. It's fresh. It's everything. It's, it's next thing to Jesus. And I'm going to prove to you that our bodies will be like Jesus. In scripture here just in a minute. Also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. You're going to be like Jesus. You, for, for the first time in our lives, for the first time, we truly will be like Christ. We strive there here. We strive to be like Jesus here. We do. But for the first time in, our, in, in, in this mortal body, we will come and we'll be like Jesus face to face with him. Our bodies will be perfect like his body. See, Jesus is perfect right now. His body is perfect. He's perfect. We're not. I can show you places on my body. That you, oh, things I've been through in my life. You can too. Every one of you here can show me something that's not right about your body. Every one of us. There's not a person here. And I know it's funny, but it's the truth. We all can show you something. Well, you did, you know, we can hide a lot, can't we, brother? <laughs> we can, Pastor. We can hide. You know, we put these masks on to wear, but sometimes we put it on there to hide. But let me tell you, church, listen to me. Let me tell you, when you get to heaven, you get that new body, there's nothing to hide. Woo! It's got, I'm talking about it. It's a, I mean, it. I'm excited because you're going to be able to say, look at me. Yeah, look at me. We're going to be just like Jesus. I'm going to share something here in a minute, Pastor, you're really going to get excited about. I'm serious. I, I thought about you, brother. Revelation 21, 1 through 2 says, Then I saw a new heaven, brother, a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. Listen, when this happens, we're going to be a new earth. Hey, it's going to be the garden again, brother. It's going to be the first, it's going to be, listen, he's going to take this old earth here right now, he's going to burn it up. It's going to be gone. Every bit of it's going to be, whoosh, it's history. But we get a new one. And this new one is going to be perfect, just like we're going to be perfect. See, God don't make no mistakes no more. He never made the very first mistake. Sin made the mistake. We made the mistake. God never made the first mistake. A lot of people blame God for it. God didn't do it. He created this earth perfect. And then sin took over. Satan come in. But he's getting, we're going to read about here in a minute. He's going to be put in his place too. 
and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Listen, the old Jerusalem that's there now, it's going to be burned up too. But there's going to be a new Jerusalem, a brand new one, perfect Jerusalem, coming down from out of heaven from God. Where is it coming from? Out of heaven. From where? From who? From God. I'm not making this up. You look at your Bibles. This is all Scripture. Every bit of a scripture coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautiful dress for her husband. You know, I thought about this. Ladies, listen, you're all beautiful. Every one of you, you're pure, you're beautiful. I can imagine every one of you, when you got married, the ones that's married, I can imagine every one of you in, in, in just bright white. Bright white. Because, see, that's what he's talking about. That's what's going to happen. That's where it's coming back. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a virgin. Virgin is perfect without a blemish. And that's what it's going to be. It, we're, not that, we're not this way now, but it's going to happen, church. When that new heaven and new earth comes, when that new Jerusalem comes, it's going to be like a bride, a perfect, pure bride. Oh, my goodness. Isn't God good how he teaches us? He is so good. He is. God is so good. Dress for her husband. Mm -mm. Revelation 21 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. We're going to be right with God. I can't listen. I don't think our minds can phantom that. Brother David, I don't think we can. I, I, we, can't, we can't fathom that we're going to be with God. And he loves us that much. We know that he loves us that much, give us his own son to die on the cross. We know that. But to be side by side with God, I thought about again in the garden when he walked in the cool of the day with Adam. He's going to be walking with us. Oh, my goodness. He's going to be walking with us side by side. I mean, we can't even, nobody's seen God. The Bible says no one's seen God, but we're going to get to see him. When we're perfect like Jesus, we're going to get to see him. We're going to get to be with him. We're going to get to hear from him, literally talk to us. Holy Spirit talks to us now from God. That's what we're here. Thank God he gave us Holy Spirit. Thank God. Thank God, church, that he gave us Holy Spirit. But this thing, when we get to heaven and when we're in the new earth and the new heaven, God is going to be walking right beside me, David. Walk, oh, my goodness. I, I mean, ooh, I'm getting chill bumps, Pastor. I mean, he's going to be walking right beside of us. Just like you two hugged up over. That's cute. Y'all sweet. Uh, everybody look over here. Look out. Ain't that sweet? Praise the Lord. That's what God's going to do. I'm serious. He's going he's to have our arm around us. Just like you, I can't wait. Give me five, Fred, brother. I know. I, I look. I made him move his arm. He'll be mad at me now. Praise God, though. I mean, listen. God's gonna be right there with us, David. He's with us right now through Holy Spirit. But His arm is gonna be around us in heaven. His arm's gonna be around us in this new earth. And I just can't wait to see what He wants me to do. I, you know what? I, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna praise Him. I'm gonna praise Him. Mm. Revelation 21, 4 through 5 says, And God, listen, really look at this. Really look at this. this. This is really, really important because this is what's happening here today. But it won't no more. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Pastor, I thought about this. All of the disciples were murdered. Um, were mar martyred. They was all, Peter was put upside down on a cross. But John, John got this right revelation. He got to hear what God wanted him to put down. And you know, I was sitting there thinking, he knew it, all this suffering that everybody went through. He knew it all. And God showed him 
what was going to be like in heaven. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more hurting, no more sickness, no more madness, no more anger, no more, listen, no more going to Walmart. Hey, praise the Lord. No more. And, 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 and just think, John sat there, and, and you know, I, in my mind I'm thinking, he's seen his brothers absolutely murdered. He's seen, G, you know, he's seen it all happen. He's seen Jesus on the cross. He's seen everything that he's seen. Then God says he left him. He left him for the reason to write revelation for us to see what heaven is really going to be like. And he says, write it all down. And I'm just sitting there thinking, what did John really think as he was seeing this and writing it down? I guarantee you he had the biggest smile on his face. That, I mean, you couldn't wipe that white smile away from him. He was so excited. He was so tore up knowing that one day he would be in heaven. And that's what we should be like. We should be so, as we read this, we should be so tore up, so excited that we're going to be in a better place. And we're going to be in heaven with God, with Jesus, with our family. And that's why we need to get out here and work to make sure our family's going to be there. I guarantee you, if I ask every one of you to raise your hand, if you know somebody in your family is lost, we'd all raise our hand. Let's get them to heaven. Let's, let's tell them about Jesus and let Holy Spirit save them. Amen? We can't save them, but we sure can do our work. But tell them about it. We can share what heaven is like. And I tell you, if you want to really scare them, share what hell is like. Because... The eternity in hell is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, just like heaven. Eternity in heaven is forever and ever and ever and ever. There's not enough evers. There's not. You can keep on all you want because eternity just, you know, I thought about eternity as I was doing this. And I thought about us when we went on a cruise, and y'all will know this too. When you go out on your cruise, what do you see when you go out there? Nothing but water. You can't see no tree. You can't see no land. I don't even see a bird. I don't see a bird. Occasionally, well, I, I guarantee you, it's getting closer to land to see the birds, because the way they talked out in the deepest part of the sea, birds couldn't even make it. So you didn't see nothing, but far as you could see was water, water. Well, that's what you know. That's what eternity is. As far as you can see, eternity it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, and that's forever, church. That that is forever. If you don't want that, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Revelation 21, 6 through 7 says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. How many, my goodness, you ought to be jumping up with joy, praising the Lord. My goodness, I want all the inheritance that's come to me. I want it all. And God says, I'm going to give it all to you. All you got to do is love him. All you got to do is ask Jesus in your heart. And you get all the inheritance. Everything. I mean, look at that. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He started it. And he, he goes all the way to the end. From the very beginning of Genesis all the way through the Word to the very end of Revelation. God is God. And he loves you. Listen, he loves you all. I'm looking at every one of you. He loves you all with so much. He loves us. I mean, I wish I had a mirror to look at myself. He loves us. He loves us. And guess what? I want everything he's got for me. I do. I want, I want it all. I want it all. And you know, the thing about God, and I know I'm preaching on heaven, what, we're going to leave here and go to a better place, but do you know God wants good for you here? In this old wicked world, he wants good for you here now. He don't want you to suffer. He don't want you to hurt. He don't want you to have pain. He don't want you to be in financial problems. He don't. God loves you. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to have everything that you could, your heart desires. But let me tell you how he gives you everything your heart desires. It's when your heart desires him more than anything. 
and more than anything, when your heart desires him more than anything, if he's first in your life, if he's number one in your life, guess what? He will give you all the rest, David. Every one of us has got a testimony. There's not a person in this church that doesn't have a testimony. Every one of us has got a testimony. And all God says to do is share it. Tell each and every person what I did for you, what God did for you, what Jesus did for you. And I guarantee you we would be up here all night. Each one of us, it would take all night if you shared really what Jesus did for you. Me and Pastor and Mary and Trish was out just for maybe a couple hours, and we, we were just telling what God did for each and every one of us. I mean, it, it's unreal. It's unreal how, again, I, I said this earlier, how me and Pastor are so much alike. I mean, we're both good looking. <laughs> I know I'd get a hallelujah. I know it. I was that's what I was after, Pastor. My first hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But putting all the jokes aside, truthfully, we are so much alike that we we knew that God put us together. We knew we knew it. But my goodness, when we come started asking questions about one another, it was like, that's me. And that's me. And it, everything, we've done the same things. The, and, the, and the thing about it, the good thing about it, it was all in God's plan. It was him, the one that orchestrated it. Every, I mean, we didn't know we was coming together. God knew it. He prepared Pastor and Trish back when they was younger, and he prepared me and Mary back when we was younger. And the things we done was the very same things, only in a different town and different churches. But it's amazing. It's amazing how much we was the same. And I guarantee you, God will show you. He will show you somebody in your life that you need to see or need to talk to. You need to fellowship with. And he'll show you things that lines up together. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Just trust him. Be obedient. Revelation 22, 5 says, And there shall be no night there. Oh, my goodness. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever and ever and ever. Come on, church, and ever and ever. Come on, and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Woo! Praise God. I mean, that's for eternity. Look what he said. Listen. I have to get my phone out sometimes to see what I'm doing, so I turn on this light on my phone, and sometimes it gets dim. But when I get to heaven, there's no such word as dim. There's no such word as dim. Let me tell you, the light that shines is from Jesus. And listen, it's not going to be no hot sun on us, David, making the sweat to, to lighten up this world, this new earth, this new heaven. It's going to be the light of Jesus. And we're going to be able to see, the, listen, he just, the Bible says no more darkness. See, darkness is really evil. It is. Every one of us has been in the dark and probably had fear upon us before, it, whether we was a kid or maybe even now. That's because darkness is evil. Light is Jesus. And the more light, the brighter the light, the more you feel better, Right? How many of you have been in a, a, a cave? I've been to Mammoth Cave. Has anybody been to a cave? They took us in the cave the first time I went. I was, uh, I was really young. But they took us in this cave. We had lights, and we walked all the way in the cave. And then all of a sudden, he says, everybody turn your light off. I tell you, I didn't know it was such darkness. It was cold and cool. But I'm telling you, it was so dark. I, you could have been standing right at my nose, and I wouldn't know you was there. Then they turned, he, he turned on one little light, and that one little light just seemed like it just, oh, it's, it was so much better. And then the next thing, we turned all of our lights on, it just lit everything up. And I thought, wow, I never dreamed of being that dark. But see, that's what Jesus says. I'm the light. There never will be no more darkness. We'll be bright like that all the time. And thank God that he created this new heaven and this new earth, with him lighting it up, 
for every one of us here. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, my goodness. And ever and ever, I love that. Question now. Are you ready? Huh? Come on. Oh, I wish, I wish, oh. You don't know how, yes. Okay, I'm glad you did that because this is what pastor's going to like. Me and him was talking. Every time we get together, I don't care where we're at, we're always talking about getting raptured out of here. We talked about that trumpet sounding. And we talked about this other night on Valentine's night. And I can't remember if it was Trish or Mary said it. One of the two said it. But anyway, it don't matter. Pastor, I do know, mentioned it would be so good to be able, when we get raptured, when that trumpet sounds and we're, we're just start heading up that way, to kind of look around and just enjoy that flight. I mean, enjoy that flight. And one of them says it would be good for it to be in slow motion. Remember, Trish, be good to be in slow motion. And I told Pastor as we was going up through there, if we was going together and we was all going up through, I'd look over and say, hey, brother, isn't this awesome? Huh? Isn't this awesome? I mean, listen, church, who knows? God says, in a, I'm going to show you that in a minute, in a twinkle of an eye, th this is going to happen. That don't mean in a twinkle of an eye that you're going to fly there. God, listen, he wants the best for us. He wants us to enjoy Every moment that he's created for each and every one of us. So why wouldn't it be okay the minute we get raptured out of here that we are going in slow motion and we get to look around and just, and this is what I really believe, Pastor, I really do. Holy Spirit touched me on this today as I was thinking about it and praying. He, he just said, we're going to be going like you thought one of you said slow motion and we're going to have both hands up just praising Jesus because we know, we know that this was the trumpet we know that it's time that we are floating to heaven and we're going up there a little bit at a time. We know where we're going to stop at. We're going to be with Jesus and we know that's the only place else is left and that's where we're heading, straight to Jesus. Now, wouldn't that be good to spend time doing that, Pastor? Just have your hands in worshiping and knowing, oh, I'm going to look over to you all and I'll say, Brother David, Jesus is next, brother. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to tell every one of us, we can just say, Jesus is next. That's who we're going to see next. We're going to see Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm telling you, that is, it just made my heart start. Boo, I, bet, I bet if I put my thing on my watch, it was probably 180. I'm serious. I mean, I was excited when I thought about it. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants us to be excited when that rapture comes that we're going to be took out of here to be with him in, the, in heaven, in the clouds, in the clouds. He's going to be there waiting for us in the clouds. He's not coming to earth right then. The Bible says he's going to be in the clouds waiting for us. And, I, well, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Let's go. Main thing, are you ready? That's the main thing. Matthew 24, 31. And he's, I'm going to read three different scriptures pretty, pretty fast here for you because they're all three lined up together. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that's what I really think. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the trump's going to blow. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the trump's going to blow. And I still believe, Pastor, we're going to go in slow motion. Amen? Amen. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead, brother, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. There's that new body. There's that new body. And there it is. We all, listen, we're all going to be, oh, we're going to look good, brother. I'm talking about we're going to look good. I mean, I, I, every one of us is just going to, we're going to know each other, but we're going to know each other spiritually, too. That's what the main, we're going to know each other spiritually. We're not going to be husband and wife. We don't even care about that. We just care about praising Jesus and being together. Amen. Amen. That's what heaven's all about. Praising Jesus and being together. And praise God with a new body. And it's going to be changed then and then raised incorruptible. I mean, that's perfect. That's perfect. Everybody stand up. The very same thing. 
It's for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet, call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. I showed you three different scriptures in the Bible where it says this will happen. God didn't just put it in one place. He let us see it in three different scriptures. That that trumpet is going to sound. The dead in Christ shall go before us. If we're here, and I believe we will be, we will be raptured out of here. We will be praising Jesus on the way. We will be healed. We will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more heartaches. And, and the thing I want you to see before we go into prayer, what I want you to see, what's really, really, to me, is the most important is the ones left behind. I mean this with all my heart. We've got a job to do, church. We've got to reach people out there that don't even believe in Jesus. We can't make them. They've got free will. But we need to do our part and tell them that Jesus loves them, no matter if they get mad at us. If they're family members, no matter what they say about us, no matter how bad they hurt us, we need to be truthful and tell them that hell is for real. Heaven is for real. And one day, one day we will stand before Jesus. That last judgment, that last time, we will be told, where you're going, heaven or hell. We know where we're going, amen? But the sad thing about it, there's a lot of people that tell you, well, I don't really know. Well, the Bible tells me if they don't know, they're hell bound. Because the Bible says you'll know without a shadow of a doubt if you truly know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So my heart tonight I'm hoping, praying everybody's saved in here. But, you know, I've seen deacons, I've seen pastors, and you have too, that thought they were saved. And truly, they wasn't. And thank God, the ones I knew, except for one, asked Jesus in their heart. Deacons, elders, pastors. And finally said yes to Jesus. Hell is so real, church. And as I said earlier, forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, we, we was talking earlier, a few of us, about needing that little drip of water on that tongue when he was in heaven. We have no idea. We have no idea. We Listen to me again. We have no idea what heaven is like. We have no idea. I mean, sorry. We have no idea what hell is like. We know how, what heaven is like, but what we read. But we have no idea how it would be to spend eternity burning the rest of your life. The rest of you, for eternity. Your life will be over, but for eternity. We have no idea. We don't. We can think about it. We can think about, you know, we, we, and I'll say this again. We, we know what heaven's like but what we read, but still our minds cannot comprehend what heaven is really like. And that's what I'm trying to say with our minds cannot comprehend what it is to be in hell for eternity. If you're watching on Facebook, please. Please know for sure that hell is for real. Heaven is for real. And that's the only two choices you got. It's Jesus or Satan. That's the only two choices we got. Jesus or Satan. I'm choosing Jesus. I've done chosen. I've done chosen. I'm just praying that people that's listening, family members that don't know that they will, before it's too late, say yes to Jesus. We've got work to do church 
The trumpet's getting ready to sound. I'm telling you, me and Pastor says this all the time. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Time is short, very short. Read your Bible. Look at it. I mean, study it. Study it. You'll see. I'm not fibbing. It's, it's short. Everything's happening in the world just like it's supposed to, like God planned. So that trumpet's getting ready to sound, and we're going to be in slow motion going to heaven. I can't wait. Amen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just pray you touch every heart. I thank you for the, the, the love that's here in this church. I thank you so much, Jesus, for creating a new heaven and a new earth for me, for every person sitting in here, for everybody listening, for everybody in the whole world that would just say yes to you, Jesus. They're going to be living in a new heaven, a new earth. A new Jerusalem's coming, and you're going to send it down here, Lord. And it's going to be perfect. We're going to have new bodies. There's no disease, no sickness. We don't need no money. We don't need anything but you, Jesus. And I just want to thank you for that so much. God bless everybody tonight. I just pray that people, you touch your hearts, and they'll come down here. If they know someone that's in their family or just somebody at work maybe, or maybe somebody they just met and the way they was living by their fruit, not to judge them, but the way their fruit is. God says we can judge the fruit, but the way the fruit is, if that person's on your mind right now, I pray you just get up and start coming down here and start praying for that person. To ask God to give you the, the time to visit this person or call them or see them or send them a, a card or do something. Some of them might be living in another place. You can't, you can't see them, but you know to, you need to pray for them. You need to tell them about Jesus. God, I pray right now that every, every person would come down here. And Lord, maybe, maybe Lord, maybe somebody here tonight that's not really for sure. I don't know. Only you know their hearts. I don't. We're not here to judge nobody. We just want to make sure everybody spends eternity with you, Jesus. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.